Well, good morning, Calvary. My name is Robert. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. It's been a great couple of weeks following the story of Joseph and God working through his situations and difficulty to bring about good things. And we've seen the reunion of Joseph and his brothers. We felt the suspense and the joy of those encounters. But one reunion that hasn't yet happened is Joseph to his father Jacob or, or Israel. And this is one of those events left undone and one of those things that we desire to see happen because Jacob earlier expressed grief and despair about his life. Chapter 42, he says that all things are against him. And you have this desire that if he only knew that Joseph was alive, it would change everything. Well, that does happen here in chapter 46. So I'm going to read the last part of chapter 46 and let scripture speak for itself on what happens. Sorry, in verse 28. It says, he, he, that is Jacob, sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to show the way before him in Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, in Goshen. He presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said to Joseph, now let me die since I have seen your face and know that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will say to him, my brothers and my father's household who are in the land of Canaan have come to me. And the men are shepherds for they've been keepers of, of livestock and they have brought their flocks and all their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls out and says, what is your occupation? You shall, shall say, your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth and even now both we and our fathers in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. And so amazing and so powerful to see the reunion here, to see the joy that comes to Israel in his old age there. And while there's much we could talk about on that reunion and the way that God redeems, even when it looks bleak and hopeless, I actually want to focus on what happens after that. See, Joseph didn't just bring his family there to get some food and provision through this famine, but he also had a plan in place for how to provide for them long term. He's already showing his mercy, his kindness and forgiveness towards his brothers in this moment. Because Joseph goes and speaks to the Pharaoh on behalf of his family. Now, Joseph was second in command in Egypt. Anyone who had anything negative to say about his family being there was likely under the command of Joseph. Yet Joseph shows respect and humility toward the leader over him and submits a request for his family to have a place to dwell there. Now, this wasn't their permanent home, and if you know the Old Testament, you know that uh, as you follow the story, things eventually become untenable for them there, and God eventually rescues them from that place to take them to the permanent dwelling of the land of Israel. But Joseph didn't have to do this. He didn't have to leverage his influence with Pharaoh for the benefit of his brothers that sold him out and caused all this pain and hurt in his life. He had the choice here to bless or to curse, and he chose to bless. But I also want you to see the mirror of the gospel and of God's actions towards us. Because think about this, just as Joseph's family needed help to get out of their, their dark and difficult situation, we as well need that. We need rescuing from our life of sin and brokenness, and Jesus provides that for us. He helps us escape that place and get to somewhere new. And just as Joseph provided a temporary home where they awaited their permanent home, Jesus has done that for us, his people. Jesus tells us in the book of John that he's gone to prepare a permanent home for us in heaven. In the meantime, Scripture says we await that time as temporary citizens here on earth. And just as Joseph's family would be hated by those around them because uh, they were shepherds, because of who they were, Jesus promises that the world will hate us if we love and follow Jesus. Now, I bring this up not to elevate Joseph to some level that he isn't, but to show that this is actually God working through him. And in these events, we see the heart and nature of God revealed. That thousands of years before Jesus would come to earth, God's plan of salvation for us was visible and consistent in his actions here. Because through all things, God is consistent and faithful, no matter what you're facing. So today, lean into God, because he is faithful and worthy of your trust. He is always going to be for you. He is always going to pursue life and blessing for you, even in this temporary dwelling place we have here. So today, find hope. God is trustworthy. God is consistent. God is faithful. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.